A client showed me their numbers from when we first started working together until now from this year. When we started working together in January, they were at 5,350 MRR. And as of today, they've surpassed over 115,000 in MRR in just a little over seven months. Point of my statement, growth strategy works, people. Patience is required. Anyone who has been or who is an entrepreneur knows about the pressure, the struggles, but also about the triumphs and the success. Finding Founders is a podcast about vulnerability and entrepreneurship, where you learn from the life stories of founders, activists, and even drug lords. Finding Founders, hosted by Sam Donner, brought to you by the HealthSpot Podcast Network, is here to inspire you on your entrepreneurship journey. But let's be real, you aren't inspired when all you hear is someone's success. The I started here, snap of a finger, and now I'm there. Real inspiration comes from hearing someone's lowest moments and rising with their success. Using music, special effects, and voiceovers, Sam Donner interviews the founders of companies to reveal vulnerability so you can learn from victory. Some episodes include modernizing meditation, how to survive anything, Y2K, financial crisis, pandemics, and alternative communities, and even escaping gangs through animation and storyboards. Listen to Finding Founders wherever you get your podcasts. Growth in anything requires consistency and productivity in your actions. Said this quite a few times in various episodes. Stop praising being busy. Make sure you're being productive. If I'm being honest, 2020 became the catalyst that woke me up. I finally stopped saying what I could not do and started making the time necessary to do. Set goals. Achieve goals. Repeat. Set goals, achieve goals, repeat. What's up, digital world? You're listening to the I Digress audio experience with Troy Sandy. Social media, marketing, storytelling, business, culture, and more. Coming to you in three, two, one. Somewhere along the way, growth happened. The same material, strategy, ideas that some companies, brands, bosses, leaders, top voices in the industry didn't believe, didn't see, laughed at, dismissed me for, or who said would never work, have now contributed to over $175 million in revenue generated for clients, over 35 brands established or rebranded, over 2,000 campaigns launched, along with the same material being repackaged as an award-winning podcast. (laughs) I digress. Yo, what's up? A new book, Strategize Up. Go get your copy. That's helping people on all levels grow at their pace where they are. All because I maintained my momentum, I kept moving, I took the punches, and got back up. I heard the doubters, but didn't stop. I felt the imposter syndrome, but didn't stop. I kept moving forward. One hit wasn't going to stop me from continuing the round and winning the fight. Set goals, achieve goals, repeat. Set goals, achieve goals, repeat. Now, I don't say this to toot my own horn because trust and believe just because I helped clients generate that amount of money doesn't mean I myself have achieved that because I am nowhere near that, not even close. But what I do know is I am confident in what I am capable of and I am comfortable in who I am to do what I do to help you grow to where you want to go. That's my truth. That's my conviction. That's my ability. So what is your truth? What is your conviction? What is your ability? What was or what is or what will be the catalyst to wake you up? To stop saying what you can't do and start making the necessary time to do what you must do. Set goals, achieve goals, repeat. Set goals, achieve goals, repeat. 
According to HubSpot, email nets $42 in sales for every dollar spent, netting an eye-watering 4,200%. So I don't know about you, but I think as marketers, we need to prioritize email marketing. Thankfully, that's where the Google Conference comes into play. The Google Conference is the largest online email marketing conference in the world. The brainchild of Jay Schwedelson of SubjectLine.com has put together a 100% free virtual conference designed to share the very latest digital trends, email best practices, and emerging tools you'll need to step up your email marketing performance today. November 2nd to November 3rd, you will learn everything you need to do to enter a marketer and come out a guru. Click on the link to register. Tell your friends to register. Tell your marketing colleagues to register. Get your whole team to register for this amazing good time. And I will see you there. Have you set your goals? You know, sometimes the people live in denial about setting goals. Because if I never set a goal, I'll never be hurt. I'll never be disappointed. I can't fail. Oh, I disagree. In order for you to maximize the time that you have, you need to have benchmarks of the milestones required to get to where you want to go. And then once you get there, you repeat the process, the steps, the systems, the strategies to do it again and again and again until it's second nature, until it's sustainable, until it's scalable, until it's successful, until it is expandable and surpasses everything you thought was possible. Set goals, achieve goals, repeat. Set those goals and hold yourself accountable to them. Put deadlines on them and do everything within your power to achieve those goals. And it doesn't mean you have to achieve your goals by yourself. Nobody lose brownie points if they ask for help, if they get help, if they get support, whether they paid for it, bartered for it, or someone gave it to you out of the kindness of your heart. It's all about just setting goals, achieving goals, and repeat. Rinse and repeat every time. Every single time. You know, my dear friends at Agora Pulse, they said the most basic social media ROI formula appears as follows. Investment. Investment is the total cost of your social media marketing efforts. Profit. Profit is the money you earned from your social media marketing efforts. So then you take profit divided by investment times 100 equals your social media ROI. And again, ROI means return on investment. So if we're using this formula to calculate ROI for, let's say, paid social media campaigns that are tracked, keyword there, here's an example. You spend $2,363.48 on a Facebook ad campaign. Your profit from that campaign, you got 10 customers who spent in total $8,272.18. Based off our formula, which is profit divided by investment times 100, you take the $8,272.18 divided by the $2,363.48 times 100 gives you a 350% ROI. Or we can simply say $5,908.70 profit after the cost of the ads. So no, I'm not trying to give you a math lesson. What I am trying to give you perspective on, we can't be afraid to associate our efforts directly to some type of data to quantify the value for the effort and investment of the money, energy, team, tools, all the things spent. Does it bring us value? And again, if you want to learn more about that, go to agorapost.com slash blog slash social media ROI. That's slash social dash media dash ROI. Someone in the valley looking at the sky versus someone on the mountain looking at the sky versus someone in a plane looking at the same sky all can conjure up different feelings and emotions toward the sky because of their different perspectives and viewpoints. We have those two kind of perspectives. Sometimes people aren't flexing when they share a moment of success. They probably had so many moments of failure while celebrating other people's moments of success that when theirs finally came, they wanted to do the same. But maybe they're met by congratulations, but maybe, just maybe, they're met with resentment or immediately tell them, stop bragging when it's their moment. It's critical to understand where you are. It's critical to understand other people's perspectives of where you are as well. But it's just as critical to understand the context of where people's viewpoints are. There will be moments where it feels the world 
is against you completely. And there will be moments where the world is your oyster and nothing can go wrong. There will be moments where the people you trust may not see your vision of your business or your campaign or your marketing process, your sales process, your product, your service. Maybe the boss doesn't see or believe in the thing you conjured up. Maybe the venture capitalist doesn't believe in funding your project yet. Maybe your slide deck isn't ready. Maybe your sales pitch isn't ready. Maybe your marketing campaign just isn't ready to launch. All these things are different viewpoints of this and that. And sometimes we can attribute that to success or to failure. Again, it comes back down to setting goals, achieving goals, and repeat. If someone says they don't like it, if someone doesn't approve of it, that does not mean what you have started, what you have built, what you have conjured up, what you have presented can't still have value. And maybe it needs to be refined. Maybe it needs to be rebuilt. Maybe it just needs to be presented again in a slightly different manner to a slightly different person for a different outcome or result. I understand that in this day and age, and this point in time, it is absolutely critical that we can get our wins, that we can get that dopamine hit whenever we can of affirmation, of confirmation that we're on the right track and that we feel value. But let's start internally with ourselves. Set internal goals. Achieve those internal goals and repeat. When you align your internal goals with your external goals when it comes to your business, your family, and all the things, it can make all of the difference. Plotting out the path to success for your customers is one part being a strategic leader and the other part calls from the car, from your desk, from everywhere. Conversations are just as much as part of a business as breathing. We all get it. We all have to do it. It's essential. Whether it's making calls smarter or your inbox is more mobile, HubSpot has over a thousand integrations built specifically to make your everyday easier. For example, With HubSpot's calling tools, not only can you forward business calls to your personal device, you can even record and track customer conversations so you can catch every single detail from wherever you are. Just like your business is built with intent and purpose, HubSpot is a purpose-built software that works the way you do, as hard as you do, to really make sure your customers get your best every single day. These 1,000 integrations helps your team to adapt, align, and achieve adoption like never before, eliminating friction and empowering teams to do their best work. Between having a mobile inbox, the HubSpot mobile app, and the ability to call from your HubSpot account, all these features work in harmony together to help you achieve your best and show up as your best self to provide the best services, the best solutions, the best products, the best deliverables for the best customers in the world. Learn how HubSpot can make it easier for your business to grow better at HubSpot.com. I saw this trending on LinkedIn where people reference Google's CEO referencing Coca-Cola's former CEO regarding this analogy. Imagine life is a game of five balls, which you juggle and try not to drop any of these balls. One ball is made of rubber. All of the rest are made of glass. These five balls represent work, family, health, friends, and soul. It will not be long before you realize that work is the rubber ball. Whenever you drop the rubber ball, it bounces back. Basically saying, you will almost jump again even if you fail when it comes to work. Now, may I remind you, the other balls are made of glass. If one of them falls, it will not return to its previous form. It will either be bruised, damaged, cracked, or even shattered. We must be aware and strive for the following. Managing our work efficiently and effectively during set time intervals. While taking the time to be assured of your sincerity, give the necessary time to your family and your friends. Take appropriate rests 
and look after your health. Set goals, achieve goals, repeat. Set goals, achieve goals, repeat. Anything you want in life requires you to set goals, achieve goals, and repeat, but it starts internally. We are the vessel that makes things happen. We can't achieve our best if we are not at our best. And for us to be obsessed over growth, over scalability, sustainability, success, profitability, marketability, sales, numbers, metrics, clients, customers, accolades, reviews, perception, reality, truth, it's a lot. The only way for us to handle the ongoing pressure, the pressure that refines for us to be who we are, to manifest who we will become, requires us to take care of ourselves internally. I was on Facebook the other day and stumbled across a memory of mine. And most times you cringe at the memories, the former memories of Facebook posts from back in the day. But this one from 2019 stuck a chord with me, and I think it aligns with this episode. This is just a friendly reminder. Coal is converted into diamonds under intense pressure and heat. The next time you ask for something, the next time you want to take yourself to another level, remember you don't get stronger without resistance. There is no testimony without a test. So embrace the heat. It's burning the impurities, the bad habits, the leeches, the toxic environments, the old you. While the pressure is forcing you to change, adapt, redirect your sale, look at things differently, go back to your roots, and conditioning you for the next level. Sometimes the biggest victories come from the hardest challenges. We all want to grow. We all want to grow fast. We all want to scale faster. We want success. We don't want to have to fail. We want to be accepted. We want to have a feeling and sense of belonging. And they are all valid. All of your feelings, all of your emotions are all valid. But to achieve at your best, we must know when to place our emotions in the right place, receive emotions in the right place, and repel emotions at the right time in the right place in order to keep our peace and our internal integrity secured for us to optimize ourselves, to do what we must, to achieve what we were meant to do, to become who we were meant to become, to receive the rewards we were destined to have. Yeah, it's not all marketing strategies, scalability, blah, blah, blah right now. But even at myself, for the first time in my life, and I mean this in every sense of the word and the truest sense, I took a week vacation. I've never had the ability or the funds or the privilege or the security to do anything of the sort. And it's true what they say. A full week gives you time to fully embrace the quietness and be more present in the moment. No more noise, no more thinking of what is, what will be, the notification onslaught from the phone, the tablet, the computer, all technology. And just be present as a human with excitement, with contentment, and satisfaction. No pressure, no stress, just being relaxed. And as much as I fought that resistance, not just because I thought it was impossible for me to do such a thing, but because I thought it would set my life back, from work and everything else, if we think about to the analogy of the one rubber ball and the additional glass balls, we have to take care of ourselves. Otherwise, nothing else is sustainable and nothing can scale. It didn't matter how many hours I worked at certain jobs. When the numbers came to a certain way, they saw me as a number, no matter how much I performed, no matter how much money I might have made them. And they had made the business decision to let me go, lay me off, furlough me. We have to understand that when we're in our right set of mind and we take care of ourselves, things happen all the time. But when you're internally strong, you can rise to the occasion to do what you need to do. I remember in the pandemic when I was laid off, literally a week before we went on lockdown, and I knew it was like a ticking time bomb in my brain. You have X amount of days to get funds, get a new job, get clients, do something. Thankfully, I have skill sets that can make me money. But the fear of not making money and not take care of my family was just a fear and a hardship that many of you have experienced and maybe could be going through. And I'm not trying to trigger anything, but I'm here just trying to share as support. During that process and that time, I took a few days to just reset myself. I need sleep. I need to eat. 
I need to have a little bit of fun and I need to reset myself and look at everything. But I knew my emotion of the loss opportunity, of the fear of the future was clouding my ability to act and think logically and decisively, which is what my family needed me the most to do. And so taking that time to retreat, reset, recalibrate, realign, and coming out of that gave me the fortitude and the focus necessary to do what I need to do, prepare myself for the mental hurdles ahead to get to where I needed to be to take care of my family. Now, thankfully, I had community. I reached out. I had some side gigs. Then I got some main clients and that carried me for a while. I doubled down and improved my business again, did a few jobs here and there, and I kept going. Maybe it wasn't perfect having one singular company hire me at the price point that I know my value was worth at the time to take care of everything. Me working, jobs here, jobs there, things like that. But guess what? We were blessed to never go a day without food or water. Rent was paid. Electricity was always on. And we were thankful and we were content, knowing that this was just a season of a moment. Now, if we go back to the very beginning of this episode, when we talk different vantage points, whether you're in the sky by way of a plane, you're on the top of the mountain, or you're in the valley, the sky looks different. But at the end of the day, it's still a blessing to just see the sky, knowing I have the opportunity to get closer to the sky. And I just kept moving and I kept going. And many times, what gets us over to that growth that we want, that promotion that we want, that startup scalability that we want, comes down to our internal fortitude to keep our momentum going, to handle all the distress, all the chaos, and continue to be in flow, despite all these things happening around us. We can only tackle one thing at a time. And I know that's coming from me, who I think I can multitask as the best of them. It still comes down to achieving one thing at a time, which come back down to set goals, achieve goals, repeat. Set goals, achieve goals, repeat. Handle the goals internally. Achieve the goals internally. Set the goals internally. Achieve the goals internally. Set the goals externally, achieve the goals externally, and repeat. Align your goals and add your goals to make sure you maintain a work-life balance. That you, as the person who was the vessel making this thing run, whether it's a department, a team, a position, or a whole organization, you still are the nucleus of making that run. Without you being at your best, You can't be decisive. You can't be creative. You can't be analytical. You can't be insightful. You can't find solutions. You can't identify problems because you are not at your best. And so if you're not growing, if you're not moving, if you're not accelerating, if you're not expanding the way that maybe you would like to in your business professionally or in yourself personally, maybe take a pause, maybe retreat for just a moment and ask yourself, what are my goals? Where am I at in achieving my goals? How am I feeling? How am I doing? Do I need some time? The problems will still be there. The solutions will still be available to be found. You can always ask for help. But there's only one you. And you only have one life. And you only have X amount of time. So make sure that you use your time wisely to enjoy, to Have moments of great satisfaction, even when times are difficult, even in times of peril. I've seen many businesses who have fallen apart and have gotten back up. They weren't the same as what they were before they fell, but they got back up stronger. Maybe they rebranded. Maybe they repositioned or maybe they were the same. Maybe the business collapsed and they took a position back in corporate, back in agency. Maybe they came from corporate and agency and started their own thing. Life has a way of charting us to get us to where we need to be. And so sometimes it's not always good to fight the current. Sometimes it's just good to flow with the current. Set goals, achieve goals, repeat. Set goals, achieve goals, repeat. Some would say that going from 5,350 in MRR which is monthly recurring revenue to 115,000 and monthly recurring revenue in just a little over seven months could be big for some and small for others, fast for some and slow for others. They could say that's phenomenal growth or they could say that's pathetic growth. Never which way you currently look at the numbers, the core is a holistic, sustainable approach to growth. 
helps you scale faster. And to be honest, that's what I'm really good at. Eliminating complexity from the equation, simplifying what needs to be done that aligns with magnifying your strengths, minimizing your weaknesses, and implementing simple but sustainable outcomes for you to grow at an accelerating rate. And truth be told, the investment people have made up front working with me may have seemed like a lot in the beginning, but the ROI allowed them to yet grow at a rate where their investment was manageable with each passing month to the point where their ROI surpassed what they could even imagine considering the timeline. Look, you need strategy just like you need your GPS to get you to your destination the fastest, most efficient way, while also accounting for traffic and other things in your control, out of your control, what you can see and what you can't see to get you there. Stop playing around thinking you can get there all by yourself. You can't. I can't. None of us can. Seek help when you can. And if you need growth strategy help, maybe talk to the strategy hacker. And that's a wrap. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Digress. What was your takeaway? Care to share your thoughts and tag Troy on social media? You can find him on all platforms at Find Troy. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a review or comment for this episode from wherever you're listening. Looking for a marketing strategist to build the structure, strategies, and systems you need to get the success you want and the ROI you desire in your business? Book a discovery call to talk with Troy at findtroy.com. And as Troy's philosophy goes, imagination is the engine, content is the fuel, social media is the highway, marketing is the roadmap, sales is the destination, culture is the GPS. Thanks for listening. (laughs) 